said that Dallas was going to be rebuilding this year. They're here with a 12-4 and four record. And Danny White. Now he's going to start to run, pointing, directing traffic, going in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. What a catch by Drew Pearson. To three. Dallas Cowboys trying to rally from behind. It's him. He was the first quarterback in NFL history to win 38 of his first 50 starts. The first to play in three straight conference championship games in his first three years as a starter. And when he retired in 1989, only three quarterbacks in NFL history, Hall of Famers Otto Graham, Joe Montana, and Roger Staubach had a higher career winning percentage and quarterback rating than Danny White. Yet that was never enough for Cowboys fans because he simply wasn't the man he replaced, Roger Staubach. He is going to throw. Drew Pearson. He got it. Touchdown. So Cowboy fans have a relationship with their quarterback that Staubach, I think, once really accurately described as we love you, win or tie. As a starter, Danny White took them to the NFC title game, which he never gets enough credit for. You know, Danny wanted to establish himself. You know, you couldn't have picked a better person, a player and a person, to replace Roger Staubach, okay? Anybody couldn't just do that. Danny White had the character, the intelligence, the passion, and the talent to replace Roger Staubach, and he did just that. When Staubach retired in March of 1980, he was loved and admired more than any player in franchise history. White, who was called Wiz by teammates, was 28 years old and had spent the previous four seasons as Staubach's backup and as the team's punter after a two-year stint in the World Football League. And it got to the point where I went in to Coach Landry and I told him that I, I would really like to be traded because I was to the point where I needed to either start playing or just be a, a backup for the rest of my career. And he understood that and he appreciated it. And he said that he didn't think Roger was gonna play much longer. Roger came to me after, the, after we lost to the Rams in that last playoff game and in the locker room and said, whiz, I'm done. The system, uh was successful before me and it'll be successful without me. Of course, the nuts and bolts of the Dallas Cowboys is, uh... <laughs> a man that wears a funny hat on the sidelines. Mixed feelings, obviously. It was a sad time for Cowboy fans everywhere, including myself, but I was ready to play. While White could have been starting for many NFL teams, he also enjoyed his time with Staubach, the two developing a close friendship that remains to this day. It's a very cherished one from my standpoint. Uh, it, was, it was fun, challenging. At the same time, Roger and I had very similar philosophies, priorities, perspectives on life. His family and his faith were most important to him over and above football. Uh, I feel the same way. In Danny White's first season as the starter, the Cowboys went 12-4 and four and advanced to the NFC Championship game, following an electrifying comeback against Atlanta in the divisional round of the playoffs. Dallas led the league in scoring, and White threw more touchdown passes than Staubach had totaled the year before. But every time I walked into a media room, did a press conference after a game, the question came up, do you feel pressure following Roger Staubach. And even Roger would call me and say, Wiz, don't listen to all that stuff. You're your own guy. You're, you're going to be better than me. You're going to break all my records. And I, and I did break a few records. The day after losing to the Philadelphia Eagles in the conference title game, White stepped onto the elevator at the team's headquarters. 
On the wall, someone had written derogatory comments towards Danny. Yeah, I was a little bit shocked, but but it was that's part of playing quarterback for America's team. And the things that we've talked about and the expectations, um, and everybody thought that the Cowboys would win the Super Bowl every year. Danny White grew up in Mesa, Arizona as the son of football royalty. His father, Wilford Wizard White, was the first gridiron player from Arizona State to be named an All-American. However, his son's best sport growing up was baseball, which led to Danny being selected in the Major League Baseball draft and landing a scholarship. Offering me a baseball scholarship was a big deal, and I went there to play baseball. Because of a lot of strange events taking place, I miraculously ended up being the starting quarterback for the football team my sophomore year. White went 32-4 and four playing quarterback for the Sun Devils, winning three Fiesta Bowls and earning All-American honors along the way. Not bad for a 180-pound middle infielder. He was the first quarterback selected in the 1974 NFL Draft, Dallas taking him with the 53rd overall pick. However, White ended up signing with the Memphis Southmen of the World Football League, playing two years there before joining the Cowboys. Roger Staubach and Craig Morton were both here. Marv Bateman was the punter. I didn't see an opportunity to play with the Cowboys anytime real soon because those were two more years that I would have spent sitting on the bench in Dallas. That would have been six years. I don't think I would have lasted six years as a backup. Once White arrived in Dallas, he backed up Staubach and punted, winning a Super Bowl ring in 1977 and finishing fourth in the NFL in 1979 with a 41.7 yards per punt average. Amazingly, he continued punting for five years after inheriting the starting quarterback duties, the league's last starting QB to perform double duty. Goes in uh, and talks to Tom and kind of gives him his argument about, you know, Tom, I'm the starting quarterback, but I'm also punting and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I can get a little bit of bump in pay. And Tom goes, well, Danny, you know, he goes, in my day, the more a guy could do to help the team win, uh, made him valuable enough. And, and Danny said, I, I had no answer. He said, I just got up sheepishly and walked out. And I said, okay, you win. After his stellar debut campaign under center, White only got better, leading the Cowboys to a division title in 1981. However, the magical season ended in the cruelest way imaginable with the catch in San Francisco, one of the most famous plays in league history. Six yards away from See a pick of some kind on the right side, possibly. Montana looking, looking, throwing in the end zone. Clark caught it. Dwight Clark. But many forget the 51 seconds that remained. If he was bitter about anything, it was how the 81 NFC title game finished with San Francisco. The fact that everybody remembers the catch. What they don't remember is the Cowboys got the ball back and he basically was throwing a touchdown pass to Drew Pearson. Uh, and, and Eric Wright, the, the DB from San Francisco, makes like a, a finger jersey grab to pull, pull Drew down from behind. Otherwise, he's going for a touchdown. Danny White then became the first quarterback that I've ever heard of to lead his team to the conference championship game in his first three years as a starter. Indeed, in 1982, the Cowboys made another run to the playoffs, with White earning second team All-Pro honors and finishing fifth in the MVP voting. Once again, though, the season ended a game shy of the Super Bowl, the Cowboys this time falling to rival Washington. He beat the three straight NFC championship games with Danny at quarterback. And he lost those games, but none of them that hit was the fault of him. 
playing that position. Just the uh, situations that happen, you know, the catch in San Francisco, Wilbur Montgomery running all over us in uh, Philadelphia in 1980, and then in Washington playing up there in RFK. And, you know, we just made some mistakes that put us in a tough position. We were expected to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl every year. Going to the NFC Championship game, even though we did it three years in a row, was not good enough. And I knew that. The thing about Danny, like I said, he went to three NFC Championship games and having the opportunity to play and how hard it is to get to those is uh, you found, you realize and you appreciate the abilities he had. And he had tremendous abilities. And that's when you look in the history of the Cowboys, he's up there in every statistic. I mean, the only thing he didn't is have the opportunity obviously as a starting quarterback to win the Super Bowl, but everything else he accomplished in the NFL. The Cowboys went 12-4 in 1983, tied for the second most wins in the league, and Danny White set a franchise record with 3,980 passing yards a mark that stood for 24 years before Tony Romo eclipsed him in 2007. Alas, all of that was forgotten with a 24-17 upset loss to the Rams in the wildcard round. Fans and even some teammates blamed White, who had four turnovers in the playoff defeat. Some began calling for backup quarterback Gary Hogaboom to take the reins. And in the final week of the 1984 preseason, Tom Landry stunningly announced he was making the move. I mean, I've never seen Tom Landry that nervous. I will never forget the press conference. Tom had a press conference every Tuesday. And it was a big one before the season started because that was the day of the welcome home luncheon. And I remember sitting in the audience and now, everybody's seen Tom Landry, he's immaculate. He had a little piece of hair back here that was standing out like that. And that I've never seen that, never saw it any other time. And saw him in a lot of different circumstances. And then when he announced the change, he was clearly uncomfortable with it. And he said, we're going to uh, make a change and the quarterback is gonna be Paz Derek. Well, that was the right tackle. Phil Paz Derek. I think when Landry made the move, it was m probably more about maybe trying to solidify the locker room. He told me that he was going to start Gary Holgaboom over me because of the pressure. There was an article in the Dallas Morning News about a game that I had made mistakes in and it cost us the game. And he said, Danny, remember that the media doesn't report planes that land safely. They only report the crashes. And so get used to it, because there are going to be cra every quarterback crashes. For White, the decision was especially tough, because Landry had been his strongest supporter, once saying he was as fine a winner as the Cowboys had ever had, and that he didn't think anyone could follow Staubach and done as well as Danny White, who at the time of his demotion was 42-15 and 15 as a starter. I went into his office and told him that I disagreed with the decision. I understood it, and he was trying. He said to me he felt like it would take pressure off of me and off of the team, if nothing else, to find out if I was the problem. He even said to me that he felt very strongly that I would be back in as the starter before long, but he he needed to satisfy some people. We all who were around him, we knew that Tom was really uncomfortable with this and was doing it not even so much because he thought it was the right quarterback move to make, but he was trying to read the pulse of his team of the belief that this was the thing that he needed to do to be able to keep some control of his players. The experiment lasted roughly half the season before Landry went back to White as the starter. The team finished 9-7 and seven and failed to make the playoffs for just the second time in 20 years. After coming back in 1985 and leading the Cowboys to another NFC East title with a 10-6 record, White then got Dallas off to a 6-2 start the following season. The Cowboys had the number one offense in the league at that time. The offense was flying, right? So they get to this big showdown with the Giants. Early in the game, Cowboys had a 
miscommunication on the line of scrimmage between Crawford Kerr and Phil Posderick. And they drop back to pass. Nobody blocks Carl Banks. And Carl Banks comes in, slams into Danny White, and not only breaks the wrist, but tears ligaments in the wrist where his wrist was never the same afterwards. He had to alter how he threw the football. The Cowboys went on to finish seven and nine, their first losing season since 1964. And although he played two more years, White's career was basically finished. At the time of his injury, his career record was 59 and 24, a winning percentage of 71.1, which ranks behind only Tom Brady, Joe Montana, and yes, Roger Staubach, among NFL quarterbacks with at least 80 career starts. I'm proud of what we did in the 80s. I mean, I think if you look at it statistically from 80 to 86, when I broke my wrist and ended my career, we were one of the most, if not the most successful team in the league, not by Super Bowl measurements, but by playoff games, playoff wins. Um, we were there knocking on the door every year and we just needed to make a couple of more plays in a couple of games. and and those Super Bowls would have been ours. When Danny White retired in the summer of 1989, his football legacy appeared written. In replacing a legend, he was never able to fulfill the lofty, if not impossible, expectations of the fans and media. But in retrospect, White's legacy looks much different. Three straight NFC Championship games for a franchise that hasn't gone that far in the playoffs for 27 years certainly doesn't sound like a disappointment. White, good protection. Six points, touchdown through Pearson. Danny White may very well be the most overlooked player in the history of the franchise, and that's saying something, because they've had a few who merited more positive attention. Danny was an exceptional athlete to be the punter and then to come in after Roger, and Danny did a lot of great things. I mean, he took him to an NFC Championship game. People say he didn't take him, but he did a lot. If you look back and look about the history of Danny White, even in college, I mean, Arizona State, we're both Arizona State alumni. He did tremendous things all through his career. White went 62 and 30 as a starting quarterback, and his 610 career punts remain a franchise record to this day. It's also worth noting that in his years as the primary starter, the Cowboys never finished in the top 10 for total defense. Each of the defenses on the five Cowboys teams to win the Super Bowl finished among the top 10. Two of them ranked first bothers me a little bit about so many of the prognosticators and the, the media people is they want to judge quarterbacks by how many Super Bowls you've won. This might sound self-serving, but teams win Super Bowls. Players don't win them. Danny White was very underappreciated in the realm of history, right? Maybe at the time, those fans knew what Danny White was doing, right? Uh, over time, it's like, well, you know, they went to a Super Bowl in 78 and, you know, never went back until 92. And Danny White was the quarterback during that, that interim. Well, again, three, think about it. Taking over for, for Roger and three consecutive NFC title game appearances, they had like the top offenses in the league at that time. I have nothing but great memories of my years with the Dallas Cowboys. However, Danny White's on-field football legacy is remembered. It should not be forgotten that he never said replacing Roger Staubach was unfair. In fact, he said it was an honor, and he's never shown a trace of bitterness for how his career is so often misrepresented. to Billy Joe, and did he break the plane? He did. Touchdown. First appearance. Dallas first punt, first one in the game. And take off with it. He's going to have the first down. Danny White, who has 
is an excellent athlete, gets the first down for Dallas. If someone's going to put a quarterback in the ring of honor, and it's not going to be Danny White next, you're going to have to explain to me why that guy achieved more than Danny White did. It was sad because you had a guy that did so much in his career and people didn't understand and appreciate it because after him there weren't a lot of quarterbacks until obviously Troy Aikman came that were very successful. And Danny was the one that, that won. The thing that I'm the most proud of is that I can go to bed at night knowing that I gave it 100%. There was not a day that I took off. There was not a play that I took off. And I was surrounded by teammates who did the same thing. And that chemistry that Coach Landry had created, that environment where a skinny baseball player from Mesa, Arizona could become the quarterback of America's team and play in two Super Bowls and win a Super Bowl is what I'm probably the most proud of. And that's all I cared about was going out and winning games. I didn't want to be a celebrity. I didn't want to be famous. I didn't want to make a lot of money. I just wanted to win football games. It's a pass to Drew Pearson. He caught it. Touchdown. The Cowboys are out in front with 42 seconds left. You know what it is, Ben? It's what we talked about, a playoff experience, making the catch, 42 seconds on the clock, if it's correct. Actually, he's pretty well covered. Danny White is 20 of 34, one interception, and no touchdowns, not yet. White is a good quarterback. Pearson stays on his feet now to Parsons.